Before then, though, more of your calls on Amy Coney Barrett confirmed to the Supreme Court. Chris Reston, Virginia Democrat. Hi, Chris. Good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, the Republicans said it's uh, in 2016. It's a presidential election, and we're going to let the people decide. They didn't say the argument wasn't that the Senate and the presidents are the same. They said, we will let the people decide. And now, eight days before the election, they are deciding who is going to be the next judge in the Supreme Court. They have no credibility. They have no honor. Plus, Amy did not answer any questions. She slammed Justice Robert for the Affordable Care Act. There are seven Catholics on the court, not six, seven Catholics. She's talking about pro-life, yet she is for guns and AR-15. She's supporting all that stuff. You cited the Washington Post about the uh, Mr. Reid on the Senate taking the nuclear option. We took, Obama took the nuclear option for a lower court because the evil McConnell held the nomination of 100 judges in the lower court. So uh, when they talk about we did it first, no, the Republicans stopped everything Obama wanted to do. 100 judges were held in lower court. But Chris, but, how do you respond to what goes around comes around? Because of the decision by Senator Reid, you have Republicans in control of the Senate, and now they've just smashed the record on putting judges, circuit court judges, lower court judges, conservatives on those courts. Well, 100 judges were held. It wasn't right. I mean, what was supposed Obama to do? Six years to wait before he nominated judges? That wasn't right. What was he supposed to do? But he left the Supreme Court, which is the highest court of the land. He didn't want to touch that. He thought this was the supreme law in the land. And, but the Republicans don't care. They went and changed the law anyway. I think sometimes I think we made a mistake. The Democrats made a mistake. They should have, since they did it, and they knew the Republicans have no honor, they should have went and changed the Supreme Court anyway. This is... I'll tell you what, we're losing our democracy. Mr. Trump dismantling the post office, want to suppress vote. He's calling everything a fraud, attacking our institutions, attacking the FBI, attacking the CIA, standing next to what's his name, Putin, and saying that he believes in more than the intelligence community. They talk about democracy. We're losing our democracy. Where is the law to stop the executive power? I tell you what. If we get a Democratic senator, we should we we, uh, we should limit the executive power. I don't care if it is Democrat or Republican. We should limit the executive power. Okay, Hello? Chris and Michael, Portland, Oregon, Democratic caller. Hi, uh, I'd like to make a distinction because uh, I think it's often confused here between increasing the size of the court and court packing. Um, I think court packing is something like what FDR did when you want to get people of your ideology onto the court. But increasing the size of the court has been argued uh, for by both right and left uh, uh, people uh, because there's a variety of reasons for increasing the size at this time for a bigger country than we were back in when, when they came up with the nine number. Uh, the uh, Circuit courts, actually, the number of decisions, I believe, from SCOTUS has been going down over the years, the ones that they hand out. Meanwhile, the circuit courts are increasing the number of decisions. Um, circuit courts often disagree, and then when that happens, SCOTUS has to step in. Uh, if we increase the size of the court to at least equal the number of circuits or maybe even have a, a little safety margin, so from, let's say, 11 to 13 or 15, and we adopt the circuit uh, procedures, like having panels and in-bank uh, proceedings, um, then we'll have a more efficient court. We'll have one that can turn out more decisions, uh, grant certain more often. And I believe firmly this is a nonpartisan issue. I don't care if this is done by a president, a Democratic president, or a Republican president. It doesn't make any difference. Because but, Michael, really you, you, you are voting for Joe Biden, is that right? Oh, of course. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a lifelong Democrat. I, I would consider myself uh, – um, no, I, I cannot conceive of voting for a Republican 
uh, president or even a down ballot ticket because it's a political culture that I, I, I very much disagree with. Understand? Uh, they're not. E they're okay. not evil, but they're just they have a very, very different uh, view of the relationship between power and uh, the powerless and I have. Okay, so and, you're and, you're advocating for putting more justices on the court. You you say it's not a partisan issue, but I want you to listen and others to former Vice President Joe Biden in his 60 Minutes interview from Sunday when he's asked about this issue of so-called court packing. We'll come back and I'll have you respond. Amy Coney Barrett is on track to become the ninth U.S. Supreme Court Justice. That would give the conservatives a 6-3 majority. If elected, would you move to add more justices to the Supreme Court? If elected, what I will do is I'll put together a national commission of bipartisan commission of scholars, constitutional scholars, Democrats, Republicans, liberal, conservative. And I will uh, ask them to, over uh, 180 days, come back to me with recommendations as to how to uh, reform the court system, because it's getting out of whack, um, the way in which it's ha being handled. And it's not about court packing. There's a number of other things that our constitutional scholars have debated, and I'd look to see what recommendations that commission might make. This is a live ball. Oh, it is a live ball. No, it is a live ball. We're going to have to do that. And you're going to find there's a lot of conservative constitutional scholars who are saying it as well. The last thing we need to do is turn the Supreme Court into just a political football. Whoever has the most votes gets whatever they want. Presidents come and go. Supreme Court justices stay for generations. Michael in Portland, Oregon. I think he's going the right direction there. Um, there are a lot of conservative uh, legal scholars. I think Professor um, Jonathan Turley uh, has written an article about increasing the size of the court. Uh, I like Professor Turley quite a lot, actually. He wouldn't be a bad choice to go on the court himself. Uh, but that aside, uh, I think Biden is, is going in the right direction there. Uh, and uh, make it a truly bipartisan commission. I mean, let's have a 50-50, you know, composition there. Um, so that nobody will have, it won't even have the appearance of unfairness or being being loaded in the, say, the Democrats' favor. I really, really truly believe that the court size needs to be increased just because of changing demographics. The decreasing number of uh, decisions that are handing down, uh, the, inc the increasing number of decisions the circuit courts are handing up. And so I really don't care if Trump does it or Biden does it or anybody else does it. Let's just get the court uh, uh, reconditioned. Uh, nine is not a sacred number. Uh, the justices used to ride circuit, and uh, in which case they would be 11 of them if we were doing that now. Okay. So let's just let's just increase the court and let nobody think it's, this is a partisan issue. This is just getting the institution uh, uh, reconditioned for the changing size of the country. Understood.